Well, I'm here at Oak Park today uh, at the research farm and John Hogan is the manager here. I'm going to ask him a few questions about the cover crops that he operates on the farm here. Uh, the farm is subject to all the usual commercial uh, regulations. We've had inspections, etc. So we'd like to hear his experience of cover crops. Well, we're throwing cover crops here for quite a number of years. And as you know, Richard Hackett has a very comprehensive program here into the research of the benefit of cover crops. But for the farm here, we're going for the last number of years. And the main reason is that we need to comply with our EFA and also the benefit that cover crops has for the following crop and for soil conditions. The benefit of cover crops is to prevent a leaching of the nutrients and nitrogen during the winter period when higher rainfall and that, and that tends to lock up the, the good nutrients that we need to keep in our soil. And also the benefit is that we have better soil tilt in the springtime when we're drilling in our crops. Well, sowing date is critical at good establishment of any cover crop. And I know there are problems, especially if you're in spring barley and winter wheat, because it's later coming off the ground, you try to get out of straw on that, get your straw removed. And that is a big challenge. It's quite different if you have winter barley, but with the winter wheat and spring barley, that is more difficult to get in early. Early sowing is critical, because you can see from the establishment, uh, it's the earlier you can go, the better establishment, the better cover you get. We found this year that we drilled here on the 1st of September, and you can see the establishment we have. It's not bad, but I know if we could go earlier, it would be much better. We have one example here on the, on this, in this field where we had a, some blank area left after sowing potato trials, where we, we put in a Facilia vetch mix, and you wouldn't believe the difference in how that established. I know that was late June, but it can just show the contrast by going early, and every week we can go earlier, the better. So here we have the uh, Facilia and the vetch, which were sown on the 1st of September, uh, after spring barley and there's a reasonable number of plants here good stand has has em emerged and established but uh, what really is showing up in contrast is the amount of biomass that is here on the first of september versus the early sown uh, crop that that uh, john has uh, just across the other side of the field like every other farmer we have to be very conscious of what we put in for our cover crop in respect of the rotation we have because if you have wild seed rape and beans or oats in your rotation you have to be very careful in what you select for example with wild seed rape in your rotation you cannot go for any of the uh, father rape or, or uh, radishes or mustard or any of those because that will conflict with your rotation and, and create problems down the road for you what we have gone for the last number of years is um, vetch and Facilia and vetch and buckwheat. Now last year we drilled in vetches and buckwheat in the first week of September but we ran into a, a problem because the first frost that came in October literally wiped out the benefit uh, that we might have got from the um, buckwheat and of course the vetch survived and went through but for that very reason I'm very shy of putting in uh, buckwheat because of the you know if you get cold or if you get frosty weather it's gone so basically what we have stayed with here is Facilia and Vetches. With our mix with the um, vetch and the facilia, it was uh, 12 kilos of vetch and 2 kilos of facilia, which is 14 kilos per hectare rate, which again works out for approximately 35 euros per hectare. So you definitely want to be getting the full benefit of a good establishment for that cost, because that's just the cost of seed. You also have to look at the cost of drilling it in and, uh, and getting it to the ground. So that is something we have to keep an eye on. We have a valley style rapid drill here in Oak Park, so that's what we have drilled in within the last number of years. Found it very uh, beneficial, we have no problem with trash or build up or blockages that that would cause with the trash that's already down on the ground. And I think the critical factor after sowing is that you roll and compa compact your seabed to where you get the full benefit of germination. I'm here on the farm of Hugh MacDonald, just outside Bagnestown in County Carlow. And we're in a field uh, with a cover crop in it that Hugh sowed in August. Hugh, can you tell me what the previous crop was and how did you establish this crop? Yeah, the previous crop was winter wheat and uh, it was cut about the 10th of August and the straw was baled and removed and a couple of days later it was cultivated with a barrel of cult cultus and the next day it was drilled with a, a barrel of rapide and rolled. And that was about the 15th of August? Yeah, the 15th of August, yeah. Okay. So Hugh, the next crop in here is going to be winter oats. When are you going to sow that and how are you going to sow it uh, with the cover crop in it as a, uh, at the moment? We uh, sprayed it on the 10th of October, hopefully with three to four days, cultivated with, with the cultus and direct drilled in with the barrister's drill. 
possibly roll it if it's fish. So there's probably four uh, probably main benefits that we'd see of having catch crop uh, or cover, cover crop. Um, the first would be really by keeping the, the soil uh, uh, healthy and, and, and active, um, as opposed to keeping it active and that'll help the, the health of the soil. So uh, by having the crop in the ground and uh, I suppose gives the food for, for um, insects and um, I suppose the fungi within the soil to uh, uh, I suppose to feed on uh, and uh, probably feed back into the, the overall health of the soil. Um, another probably benefit we, we'd, we'd see be around um, cover for, for, uh, for the soil so having uh, that structure in place um, aids in, 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 in fighting against any corrosion with, with heavy rains that will come through. Um, also around uh, the, the structure so with the, the different root structure of, of the of the cover crop so you'd have the um, your tillage radish would have a, a, a thick a deep root which would would open up um, pastures down into the soil and your your uh, phacelia which would have kind of more of a fibrous root which around the top layer of the soil so I suppose opening up those channels for for air and also for for drainage uh, would be kind of the key benefits and then the um, the probably the last benefit around organic matter. So um, I suppose having that, uh, that, that green cover uh, in, in, the, in the soil as well. So that's probably the, the, the key benefits we see. So today I want to give you a brief summary of our main findings from our cover crop work here at Oak Park over the past 16 or 17 years. I suppose three or four main findings. Firstly, in terms of nitrate leaching, which is one of the main benefits of cover crops, uh, we've found that they can very significantly reduce uh, nitrate leaching uh, when they're sown early and you get good autumn growth uh, and particularly on the, some of the light sandy soils here at Oak Park uh, where you get uh, less good uh, early growth uh, the effects can be can be reduced. Uh, they can also have positive effects on other soil uh, properties such as uh, organic matter and earthworm numbers uh, but generally you only find uh, those benefits after a number of years of repeated use of, of cover crops. In terms of effects on the yield of the subsequent crop that you sow after you, you plough in or you cultivate in your cover crop, we've usually found only small and variable effects on, on the yield of the subsequent crop. Uh, so where you compare uh, plots where you've had a cover crop and where you, to plots where you've had no cover crop over the winter period, you generally don't find uh, a, a very big difference in terms of, of yield between those two plots. So you're not getting a lot of benefit from the, the, the cover crop in terms of yield usually. The other potential benefit of uh, cover crops is that uh, you might be able to reduce your fertilizer nitrogen uh, applications to the subsequent uh, barley crop. But what we've generally found is that the amount of nitrogen, even though these crops can take up quite an amount of nitrogen over the winter period, the amount of nitrogen being released from them is often quite small and often maybe a little bit late in the season uh, compared to when the crop actually needs it. Uh, so it's often quite difficult to reliably uh, reduce uh, your fertilizer inputs as a result of having cover crops. The one exception to all of this would be where you've got a lot of legumes, so things like vetches, peas uh, or clovers in your cover crop mix and these uh, as well as taking up nitrogen from the soil they can also fix nitrogen from the air and they also break down quite quickly and these can give you quite a bit of nitrogen uh, to the subsequent crop and they can also lead to yield benefits in, in the subsequent crop and this is a topic that we're currently investigating in, in, in more detail such that we, we would hope to be able to predict the amount of nitrogen that's coming from these leguminous cover crops uh, into the following uh, spring barley crops such that we could uh, predict but how much you could reduce your fertilizer nitrogen by.